The Kaiser Family Foundation presents Health08.org, election news, analysis, and events. Dr. Benjamin, thanks for joining us on Health08.org today. I'm glad I could be here. Let me start asking you the same question I'm asking everyone else, and that is, what does your organization view as the most significant challenge facing the healthcare system today? It's figuring out how to make sure that we get uh, quality, affordable health care for all. I mean, very much focused on covering the uninsured. And why? Well, you know... Why do you rank that as number one? I know there are lots of other issues important to the association. Well, cost is a big issue, and certainly it's a big issue for those people that are insured. Uh, but, you know, if you focus on people that are uninsured, you, you deal with cost, quality, and access in one fell swoop. Um, you know, it's, it's a significant problem for people who are uninsured, and it's also a growing problem. Um, so we really need to find ways to deal with that problem, I think, very early, early on in our health care reform efforts. And I know that your association represents a very diverse group of health care professionals. Has it reached consensus about what needs to be done to broaden access? We reached consensus on principles, um, but we Those range. The, that's the easier part, isn't it? That's the much easier <laughs> part. You know, we, we range from a strong component who believes very strongly in single payer um, to those who've kind of said, well, we can't get there, so let's do incremental reform, but do it in a way that when the system uh, understands that um, administrative simplification makes a lot more sense, we can move in that direction. Um, so our members are kind of all over the place, but we, we think we've got to do something about it now. So what are the guiding principles, what, what you've just described? Well, getting, getting um, everyone in, in, in the, um, uh, under the big tent, uh, making sure that it's affordable for everyone, uh, making sure that it's equitable, uh, making sure that providers are adequately paid uh, at all levels. Uh, making sure that the system doesn't discriminate against one type of individual over another kind of individual. Um, we think that these are very, very important principles that, that need to be in any kind of health care plan. And if the association were at the table when these kinds of issues were being negotiated at a very high level, even though these are general principles, where would the association draw the line? What things could the association not agree to, for example? Well, I, I think everything's on the table. Um, but, you know, we want to make sure that people don't um, get cut out of the system, for one. Um, we would want to see the system clearly move um, from kind of a sick care system to a system that values prevention uh, and early intervention um, as, a, as a core belief. Um, and any system that doesn't deal with prevention and early intervention is a non-starter for us. And how do you see the notion of emphasizing prevention played out in the policy arena? What needs to be done? Well, let's look at Medicare to start with, um, making sure that we um, rationalize uh, Medicare in such a way um, that people can get preventive health services in the Medicare program um, and that they um, have first dollar coverage uh, in Medicare, uh, for example, to encourage people um, to get um, colon rectal screening and getting mammography and making sure they get all of their uh, other preventive services, some which Medicare does cover and some which they don't, uh, making it easier. Uh, for the Medicare program to add preventive services which are uh, evidence-based and proven into the program now without having to go to Congress every time um, for a new benefit. Um, looking at ways in which um, we can um, get uh, all the kids in the Medicaid program, for example, uh, all the preventive services, cut all these barriers that we, artificial barriers that we put in the system um, to helping people who are already eligible for existing programs from getting in. At this moment in time, who is the more significant player in health care changes or reform? Is it at the state level or the federal level? Well, because of, the, frankly, the lack of real aggressive assertive leadership at the national level, the, the states have been the, the laboratories of experimentation. So right now, the states are doing the bold experiments. Um, but there's only so far they can go without real national leadership. And Part of this interview series is about trying to identify what obstacles have blocked progress in the past. You've just identified one, and your view is the, the lack of strong national leadership. What prevents that from developing? Um, you need the president to stand up and say, um, just like we have a, um, um, they want to have a strong economic policy, um, they want to have health care policy. 
Uh, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a president to say, um, as a stretch goal, that we are going to be one of the healthiest nations on the planet in one generation? That would be a wonderful stretch goal, and then put on place all the things to do that. Um, that that's not unachievable for, for this nation. Uh, we're speaking in late April of 2008, but if you can look ahead and project, what are your realistic expectations about whether the discussion we're having now in the presidential campaign about health care changes, how much of that do you think gets carried over in a meaningful way in 2009? It's going to be absolutely essential um, that health care remains in the minds of the public um, between now and Inauguration Day. Um, it's a big issue. Um, it's important that it doesn't get um, um, hidden behind um, concerns about the economy because it is an essential component of maintaining a good economy. We need to make sure people understand the critical linkage between health care and this current economy. Um, it's important um, that as we um, 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 wind down the war in Iraq um, and to the extent there is a peace dividend, um, that those dollars don't go um, to non-critical domestic services like health. Um, it's going to be absolutely essential that we keep that, uh, keep that process moving. I want to ask you one final question. When you go to the association's website, an issue that, that is prominently discussed is the linkage that your organization discusses between climate change and health care issues. Discuss that for a moment and whether you think it's been a subject in the presidential campaign so far. Well, climate change has kind of been a side issue. Um, but if you think about it, um, uh, the fact that these extreme weather events have a very significant um, negative health outcome. Uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods have significant impacts um, on health. Um, droughts um, cause starvation, um, mass migrations, significant impact on health in terms of starvation, nutrition, diseases. Um, climate change is going to impact this planet. Um, and the people on this planet in very, very significant ways. Um, and the point is that there's something we can do about it. And so my organization is talking a great deal about how the average individual um, can do some things right now um, to reduce this risk in the future. When it comes to a policy agenda, what is it? For climate change? For, I mean, and, and the health care issue? How, how is that linked? And do you have ideas for policy reform? Oh, we, we, th we think very clearly um, that we need to step back and look at a range of policies around transportation, how we build our communities, how we deliver health care services, where those health care services are. Um, you know, um, here in Washington, D.C., there are parts of this city that are, are, that are clearly underserved with health care services. There are parts of this city where it's difficult to get to um, from a transportation perspective. So how you build these communities, how people get to transportation, access to services, uh, where the health care providers are, are all um, clearly linked together. Okay. Dr. Georges Benjamin, thank you very much. Thank you. The Kaiser Family Foundation presents HealthOH.org, election news, analysis, and events.